good set of numbers in the third quarter. The company clocked in solid growth and also margin expansion was something that the street will like. Vinithi Saraf Mutreja, the managing director of Vinithi Organics, joins us. Uh, hi, Vinithi. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining in and congratulations on a solid showing. Now, I'm looking at your nine month performance and you've grown by close to around 40%, with margins in that vicinity of around 28%, though in the past quarter, margins were in excess of around 30%. Now, in the past, for FY23, you were guiding for 25% revenue growth with margins of around 28% odd. Do you want to revise that since at the nine-month mark you're doing so well? And also, what's the outlook for FY24? Go ahead. See, Q3 has been relatively good for us. Uh, and Q4, we expect uh, to do some in line with Q3, mainly because the demand for our products uh, is quite good. Um, ATBS uh, remains strong. Uh, so does IBB. IBB actually has picked up uh, quite a bit uh, starting uh, the previous quarter, and we're seeing that growth in uh, Q4 as well. Uh, IB remains stable. Uh, butyl phenols, uh, you know, again, we are gaining market share. Uh, we've run at about 60-65% uh, market share. So uh, Q4 should be in line with uh, Q3. Also, there was a margin improvement um, because, again, now, uh, you know, when the demand is good, uh, spot prices go up. Also, Q, uh, raw materials were high in Q2, and we have a quarterly lag in our pricing system. So that was reflected in uh, higher Q3 prices. So you end uh, this year closer to around, uh, you know, around 2,200 crores of revenues, 2,150-odd? Yes, that's, that's about right. And margins? Well, um, you, you know, I think uh, one can expect even the margins to be some about... 30% of that. Hmm. So 30% as compared to uh, 28, right, Najib? 28% 20, for the first nine months, and for the and past quarter, it was more than uh, more than 30%, yeah, so 32. A full around 30% or so. Uh, got it. Uh, you know, Vinithi, just a, a quick uh, point on uh, the expansion uh, that is underway uh, at, uh, at Vinithi. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I was reading a note which says that you are uh, prioritizing uh, ATBS expansion over everything else. Can you talk to us uh, a little bit about that? What is that expected to do uh, to your earnings profile, revenue and earnings profile, once this comes on, by when? See, the in ATBS, we're adding a new line. Now, our total capacity will increase from 40,000 uh, to 60,000 uh, tons per annum. Uh, the reason we are prioritizing is because there is demand uh, for that product. And also, it's a brownfield expansion. So it's uh, easier to implement as against the other projects, which are greenfield uh, expansions. So, mm -hmm. You know, again, now that is keeping in mind growth for the next five to seven years. Uh, year on year, one can expect maybe an extra five to six thousand tons of uh, ATBS. Mm, okay. Uh, so since you said that demand is picking up in a big way, what kind of average revenue growth do you think you can eke out in FY24? And what are the segments, the sectors you are, you're away, you know you're present across segments, whether it's pharmaceuticals, uh, oil, oil and gas, textiles, adhesives, etc. Uh, so, which is the pocket that's looking the strongest now? And what kind of revenue growth are you targeting for the full year FY24? Sure, sure. See, the ATBS expansion will only come on stream, not before December 23. Uh, but we, are, we expect uh, revenue expansion, revenue growth uh, in FI24 uh, coming from butyl phenols as well as the antioxidant business, uh, which we will be merging so with VOL. So again, uh, one can expect a growth of about 20%. Okay. All right. okay, that's 20% revenue growth in FY24 is what you're looking at, right? Right, yes, that's right. Okay, and on the margin front, is this 28 to 30%, is this a band that you're looking to, you know, is this something you can sustain in FY24 as well? Yes, absolutely. 28, 29% seems quite uh, sustainable. Okay, all right. Uh, Vinati, uh, you know, just to clarify, when does the merger go through? So, uh, we will be having an EGM, uh, so we are waiting shareholder approval uh, end of February. Then we okay. need uh, the final clearing from NCLT, so maybe in the next two months or so. So, so Viral Organics, uh, say by the first quarter of FY24, do you expect it to be done? Yes, Viral Additives. Now, Viral Organics viral is all. Viral uh, yes. Additives, okay, all right. And. Uh, you know, butyl phenol, uh, what can it contribute? I mean, this year, what is the rough revenue run rate it should do? And for the coming year, what can it do? At peak, I think it's around 700 crores, 800 crores odd? 
Yeah, see, you know, this year maybe Butyl Phenols contributed about 250 uh, odd crores. Uh, you know, next year again, if viral add part 50% of the butyl capa uh, phenols capacity is to service viral additives, the antioxidant mm -hmm. business. That picks up, uh, then you can see butyl phenols running at close to 90% capacity. Oh, sorry, I didn't get that. Viral additives, I think the last time you had said that it has a potential to clock in 500 crores in terms of revenues. Uh, do you That's right. With that? viral, additives, viral additives is a forward integration of the butyl phenols. Hmm. The butyl phenols are used in antioxidants. So as antioxidants pick, picks up, so does our capacity utilization of butyl phenols. Combined at full capacity, viral additives plus butyl phenols do have, uh, you know, revenue potential of maybe prices have softened now of 800 to 900 crores. But uh, I think that would take uh, about one year or 18 months to achieve. So in the next year, one can expect maybe viral additive capacity to be 50% and butyl phenol capacity to be about 70%, 65, 70%. Okay. Mm. All right. Very quickly, before we let you go, how is demand? I mean, uh, have you seen any kind of slowdown since bulk of your revenue comes in from the export market? Uh, have you seen any kind of slowdown or nothing as yet? There's a, I mean, uh, I mean, you have my quarter numbers in front of you. So, yeah. so I, I, and I'm telling you, Q4 is in line with uh, Q3. So, uh, you know, the ibuprofen market has picked up, uh, shale gas industry, oil and gas is doing well. So at least for our for our exports, you know, freights have come down, you know, mm. there, uh, there's logistics has eased down. So things okay. are looking positive for us at least. All right, Vinati, good to hear mm. that early in the morning. Uh, things looking up for your business. You know, we don't get very often managements who are exporting who are that confident, but maybe it's the product that you're servicing as well. And you're seeing solid demand out there. So good to see that you lend this year with solid growth and next year as well you're guiding close around 20% growth. Thanks so much for joining in and filling us in with those details. Also, I think, you know, this uh, question uh, merits uh, importance because uh, there have been production cuts by yeah. a lot of these large clients like BASF, etc. We had spoken to Vinti about it last time around as yeah. well where she said that at that point in time, there was no major impact. And as she said, now 20% is something that she's holding on to. In fact, if Dipan Mehta is still with us, just want to get a quick comment in from him as well. Okay, we'll do one thing. We'll take a quick break and come back. We'll chat with Dipan in a bit. We'll get our technical experts going too to find out what to expect in trade this morning. Stay tuned.